My guest today is Beth Humphreys. Beth, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing really well. It's Friday. I'm feeling healthy. And I can't complain. I love Fridays. <laughs> what uh, What do you do, Beth? I, I lead a team of architects in the Microsoft um, U.S. Global Partner Solutions team. Uh, I work on the architect team. I have a team of cross-solution architects, and we focus on the technical readiness of our partners. So we do deep, advanced, role-based skilling with our partners. So those who are working with us to go build stuff, we want to make sure that they're not just building stuff, they're also building skills so that they can go and be successful with the stuff that they built. Okay, now I actually knew the answer to that question, of course, because you are, the team that you lead is kind of a sister team of the team that I'm on. So you're, right. a, you're a peer of my manager. That's right. And, uh, and I want to talk about um, uh, leadership with you, not just management, but leadership, and not I just leadership, happen. but technical leadership. You know, what does it mean to be a leader and what does it mean to be a leader of technical folks uh, is that how is that different um mm -hmm. let's let's start about with um with leadership leadership and management are not synonyms are they no they are absolutely not um i think that you know, a lot of people think that when you become a manager then it's like then oh it's just like like leadership leadership and i can just i can just let you know that i was a technical individual contributor oh. and the, the, the kinds of, of leadership skills that you have when you are an individual contributor, um, they, they, they do overlap with leadership skills as a manager, but there's different ways that you apply them. And then um, when you become a manager, then there's just, I think, added responsibilities to, to kind of like the role that you play, like how you act execute right there's people management things that you have to go do but you still have leadership attributes that you still have to go and apply um but they're they're slightly different because they get applied differently so the people management piece of it is just kind of how you're executing within your role but the leadership skills just inflect differently uh, and it's one of the reasons why i moved from becoming a a, a technical individual contributor leader I wanted to go and learn how do I go and apply the leadership skills that I learned as an IC over into becoming somebody who's actually leading a team of people and, and um, also has people management responsibilities on the top because it's, it's just a completely different level of, of um, leadership skills that you have to have. Okay. Well, before we dive into the technical part of it, what's, tell me about some of the things that are different when you, you said, well, actually you said you were doing leadership things when you were an individual contributor. You didn't have people reporting to you and yet you were still a leader. T tell me a little about that. Yeah, that's a really great question. So I, I've been with Microsoft for quite some time. I've been here for 17 years and Sorry. I did spend a good bit of that time uh, in a, a technical role in our sales organization. And so I looked after the, the technical relationship of one global company. And it was like the relationship between them and um, us as Microsoft. And so it was really interesting at the kinds of things that I needed to, to do as a leader. Uh, um, influence is a huge, huge leadership skill and it could you know it combines a whole bunch of different things and so i not only had to go and figure out how to go get uh the teams that i worked with within microsoft to come and make sure that you know we're all aligned and kind of working together on uh, leading our customer to the things that we're all trying to jointly get done and that take that, that takes a great de degree of influence of what's in it for you on our internal side, but also putting and leading together the, the teams within our customer and how they're coming together and how we're then how we're all coming together to go get something done. Um, and so, you know, convincing the post customer on this is what, you know, we're trying to go get done. Here's what we're trying to go do to help you realize the value of your investments. And then here's the team on my side that's going to go and help us all be jointly successful. So kind of sitting, sitting in the middle and orchestrating all of that um, took a, a great de degree of, of, of influence skills on my side to, to be able to go and accomplish. So that's kind of an example of, of, of individual contributor leadership. But, you know, there's other things that I think are really, really important when you're 
you're talking about individual contributor technical leadership. And that's how do you go and create that clarity that you need uh, of, you know, why am I even asking you to come and do these things? Um, does everybody understand what we're trying to go do? And in my experiences with my customer, because I was there for such a long time, I kind of kind of became a little bit more integrated into their teams. And so I also needed to go and make sure, hey, there's clarity on what it is that we're all trying to go do together and, you know, let them go and wrestle with things. But then, you know, everybody kind of comes back to the table. And so it's, you know, it's, it, those are some, just some of, of the attributes I think that are important as an individual technical leader. So it's not about being the domain subject matter expert on this one deep thing. It's, it's about the leadership skills you're using to go get some things done or to go and help somebody be successful or how you're going to go and pull in and leverage other people's ideas. Yeah, that you know, this resonates with me because you, when you said this, I started thinking about my years as a consultant. I would go into a company where I had zero authority at all. I, you know, I can't, I can't order anyone in that company to do anything. I'm just a guy from the outside, and yet I depended on them to do things. I couldn't do everything mm-hmm. myself, and so I somehow I had to use the word influence several times. I had to influence yeah. them. I had to convince them it was in their best interest yeah. to do yeah. that. And I, that's, I guess, that's a that's a form of leadership. It absolutely is. And I remember early in my career at Microsoft and and when I started to really get into kind of this this leadership passion that I have, um, one of the biggest aha moments that I had on my journey was I used to go and lurk into this internal community that we had at Microsoft. It was actually the the MCS architect communities. And it was when I was working with my customer and I knew like, oh my gosh, look at all the knowledge that's here. And I felt like I was cheating when I would kind of go lurk in there and I go pose a question. I'm like, hey, so my customer's trying to go do this and I'm not exactly sure what the answer is. And I always felt like I was cheating by asking for, for that help and all of that sort of stuff. When I realized when I was going through a leadership program here at Microsoft, my biggest aha moment was that's not cheating. That's actually a leadership attribute to go and pull other people in and help you go together with something. Because A, it feeds a passion that I see with a lot of people that I work with that, hey, they want to go and help. Um, But it also gives them the ability to have an impact. But then it just makes it you even broader. Right. So making yourself vulnerable when you don't know something, which is, believe it or not, also a leadership attribute to have that courage to go and ask for that help when you don't know it, because you're not going to know everything. Um, In fact, if that's an impossible goal, it's like asking to be perfect. And that's also impossible. So how do you go and bring all those people in together with you Um, was a not cheating. It was actually um, a leadership attribute that I didn't realize that I was I was using. It certainly scales better if you can draw on the oh, knowledge yeah. of everybody, particularly a company this side with so much technical knowledge. Um, mm-hmm. and, uh, trying to hold the entire knowledge of Microsoft in your head is, as you said, an impossible goal. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, that, that sounds like a, a good example of technical leadership. And that's what I really want to talk to you about is what is when you, what is the distinction when I start uh, being a leader of just people in general versus being a leader of technical people? Where do we see those differences? So, le- so the question is, being a leader of people or leading de- being a leader of technical people, There's, is there a difference? Is that the question you're asking yeah. me? Um, I think that there is a difference um, uh, because what you – there is and there isn't. That, that's a, an interesting question. There is in that you have to understand how technical people are motivated, and that's something that I – like I brought a great deal of empathy to the table with this is simply because, well, I was a technical person. And so I, I knew what, what motivated me and it wasn't always, Oh, let me go make more money. Right. It was, I want to be recognized for the work that I'm doing. Um, I want to have the space to be able to go and learn something new and apply it. And I, um, you know, I, I, you know, the things that I appreciated about prior managers that I've had is the that ability to 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 fail a little bit and wrestle and struggle with with things but then come out and learn something right so that's that's something that i always find valuable so when i became 
a manager of a technical team. I have only managed technical teams. It's actually a cornerstone of how I think about uh, my career of the things that are important for me when I consider a role. Leading technical people is one of my cornerstones. So if I'm ex- exploring something new or anything like that, I want to be able to go lead technical people in some way. And it's because I know how they're motivated. I know um, at a high level, everybody has their own personal motivations, but how do we make sure that they can be wildly successful? And, you know, that's that's the biggest thing that I have in leading leading a technical team. But boy, I tell you what, when I first became a manager of technical people, I gave myself kind of a triple whammy. It was, all right, I'm going to go and become a first time manager at Microsoft leading my peers. So I was an architectural or, or uh, a, an account technology strategist. And I then went to go lead a team of account technology strategists. And so they were my peers and now I'm leading them. And that's a whole different ball of wax. There and I walked in that with such, oh gosh, it was so, so hard. It was so hard because I, I had to switch my relationship with them because you're sitting in a much more personal level. So now here's the difference between um, being a people manager versus an individual contributor. You're sitting in a completely different personal relationship with those people because now you have uh, an impact on their career trajectory, how much they make, um, whether or not they they get promoted and, and advocating for them in those kinds of conversations um, the how they get awarded, all of that kind of stuff is is highly, highly personal. Right. Uh, because I mean that's that's how you know, that's how you're making a living. That's how you support your family. Right. Um, and so that those were some of the biggest changes that you know I saw. And so I've had to learn throughout, right? Of hey, remember you did these roles. Um, these are the things that are really, really important for them. But asking them also is is the other thing that was was really important for me to learn is like, what really motivates you? So that was a big like, like fire hose of learning that I had when I was early, an early manager. And yeah, that How was- did you learn that? Did, did the company support you with this? Or is it sort of trial by fire? <laughs> so mentorship was an enormous tool that I used. I had several peer mentors, both within the organization that I, that, that I was in and also outside of it. And so having a network of mentors, whether it was those that I just kind of came in, didn't talk to a whole lot, but I, I had a specific thing that I would talk to them about, um, maybe would talk as frequently and others where it was like a, a, a constant um, discussion. So recognizing... Um, and having that awareness of what skill sets other people had, that's something that that is really, really important to be bringing to the table, whether you are leading people or not, is like what recognizing that, hey, David knows how to think very strategically about this. And so he's got a strategic mindset. And that's something that, you know, maybe I value or it's a gap or something that I don't do well. I want to go and maybe do a speed mentorship relationship with David and say, hey, how do you think through things? Right. And that's something that I do all the time. I speed mentor with people all the time. I'm just having a conversation with them. And all of a sudden it's like, well, hey, how do you go do this? Can I call you up and can we have a deeper conversation about that? So mentorship, when you are entering into something new, is 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 highly valuable, but also going ongoing ongoing those relationships will either open up doors for you um that's what's happened to me uh it helps you wrestle with things that maybe you're struggling with uh and um maybe it helps you go and explore uh when there's there's something new that you're looking at uh trying to go to go get done it sounds like you're actively finding these mentors and driving that relationship yourself as opposed to in a lot of organizations mentors are assigned to you and a lot of us i I made this mistake early in my career i waited for mentors to come to me and it took me a while to figure out you know it's my responsibility i need to find them and and it sounds like you learned that earlier than i did (laughs) oh it's it it is so critical that that you so you are responsible for going and finding what what mentors are and what that relationship is. And I, I am a full believer that when you ask somebody to mentor you, whether that's informally or formally, you you have to kind of own, you have to own that relationship. You have to go and, and go in there with a purpose of here's the reason why I'm talking with you. Here's the things that I'm trying to go and figure out 
So I think that's a big responsibility that, that sits on you. I do see that there, though there's there's like different kinds of mentorship. Like when you're entering into maybe a new job or a new team, you, you do want to have a peer mentor. And I think that my role as a manager, when I'm bringing somebody new onto my team, I need to make sure that they have a good peer mentor or good peer mentors uh, that, that I know will help go make them successful, whether it's how you go do the job or if we're, we do a lot of cross team collaboration on our existing organization, uh, that's just simply the culture that we have on our team. I like to also go pluck somebody who I know does that kind of thing really well, or that they might be working with frequently to have a peer mentorship relationship so they can go and see, hey, this is what good looks like. So I think that, you know, going in and finding your own mentors is a journey. Uh, it depends on where you are in your career. Sometimes you need a little bit of help of maybe finding some of those people and then encouraging uh, everybody to go and figure out how do you go and build out your network? Because your network may be a network of people who you are just networking with, but also might be a mentor sometimes for you or you may be a mentor for them. And so but peer mentorship, you know, to kind of like get you bootstrapped up into your job, I think that that a good manager will have that line of sight of that as you're walking in, um, as they're getting to know you and maybe helping you network as well. Interesting stuff. Is, uh, what uh, what else? Is there anything we haven't talked about that you feel is important that we should cover? You know, I get, I get a lot of questions about uh, leading with authority or leading without authority and all of that. And one of the things that I heard recently uh, in in a conversation we were having with a panel of um, our distinguished engineers and technical fellows. And one of them said that um, leading with authority is a myth. It's actually something that 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 everybody has to have some level of knowledge about how to influence because that's what it is regardless of whether you have authority to go make a decision maybe as an agent of that company or of that particular piece of the business, um, or you're an individual contributor, right? Everybody is, that. that's the lowest common denominator is, even when you are a manager who is also a leader, how do you go and influence people to go get things done? Whether you're a manager of managers, you're a manager of frontline manager. Um, so that's kind of like a, a big equalizer and going and developing that, 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 skill of how to go and influence people and understand what motivates them and what are some give gets that you can get out of things um, is is huge regardless of whether or not you have authority. So it's kind of a myth to say, hey, you have more power when you have uh, when you're leading with authority versus not. That, that's not that's not true. That's that, that I agree um, with that that technical fellow who said that that's not true. You everybody has has to have that level of influence. I think when I to paraphrase what you just said, <clears throat> everyone is a leader, whether or not they have anybody that actually reports to them or not. And that's a skill that uh, we'd all uh, could do well to improve that skill in ourselves. And just once we get in a position where we're actually responsible for, you know, doing the, the end of year reviews and the, <laughs> we officially, I give that, a, you call it the authority, <clears throat> then that's just a that's a small step compared to learning leadership skills themselves. So that uh, I think that's a I'm trying to paraphrase what you said. I, I hope I did yeah. a good job. <laughs> you did. That's exactly it. And and leadership um, as a person who is also in a technical role, um, you know, how do you you know become more personally aware or uh, understand what you know how other people operate you know in terms of you know like how do they interact with people and and all that sort of thing because you you have to empower people there's a whole bunch of like like attributes of leadership that, that come along with the ride how do you empower people how do you go and drive that clarity how do you go and have kind of a level of influence how do you have courage to go and do some of those big things and then bring these other people in uh, and how do you innovate across all of it? And so it's 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 a it's a bunch of of skill sets that come together that either you have a lot of strengths in or you are still developing in. Um, you know, there's it's it's just a constant journey. Leadership is just a is simply a constant journey of of learning and applying and failing and 
dusting yourself off and, and getting back up. So that's that's the that's the gist of it all. Um, where, what would you say to someone that uh, wants to improve their leadership skills? Where where would they go? And where would they start mm. on that journey? Wow, is books, that books to read? Are there online resources. Uh, you mentioned mentoring, of course. That'd be a, a great start. You know, I I've read a couple really really good books. Um, one is um, Radical Candor, um, and I'm trying to remember who who wrote that. Um, I I don't have the name handy, uh, but Radical Candor is is a fabulous book of whether or not you are a uh, a, a somebody who's a people manager or an individual contributor. I thought that book was fabulous. Um, Kim Malone Scott wrote that book. Yeah. I'm going to pretend that I, I just knew that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's it. Um, so that's, that's a really, really good book. Um, I think uh, to read, especially because being clear about feedback and, and, and it's not always about like critical feedback and that kind of stuff. You know, it's about how do you encourage people at the same time? Uh, and, and, you know, get them to go, to go do more and to reach higher. And so that, that's one of the things that yeah. I definitely appreciated yeah. about, about that book. Yeah, that's a great, that's a great book. But, you know, I, I like to, uh, I follow a couple people on LinkedIn, uh, who I think, you know, are, are fabulous. Um, and of course now I'm sitting here thinking, well, who are those people? Um, but you know, I I like to. I'm very involved in in internal leadership programs at, at Microsoft. Um, we have um, some internal communities um, that uh, you know talk about you know what what does leadership mean around this or that you know. And so the way that I like to to go and learn about leadership is I go find people who I really think are great leaders, and because you you can kind of tell. And I like to connect with them. I like to talk to them, and I don't care whether they are. A manager, a distinguished engineer, or just maybe an early in career um, person, they all have something that that I know that I can go and learn from. And so I like to go and get kind of like my leadership experiences actually through my my experiences with people and having those conversations. So that's typically how I go and learn it. And then I have the advantage of being involved in those those leadership programs. And so I'm like constantly learning in them alongside of the cohorts. Um, so I have, uh, uh, I think, a blessing there that I get to stay involved. I like that idea to find out who you recognize as a good leader and then reach out to them and just mm -hmm. talk to them. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Beth, thank you so much for your time. This has been a really interesting conversation. Yeah, you're welcome. I was happy to have it. And I'll talk about leadership all day long. So I appreciate you bringing me in and having the conversation. All right, you stay safe. You too. I like to have a nice cup of coffee and I love talking about technology with all my friends, especially when it's about leadership. <laughs>